Saturated six. Right. So the best I can do in bagging the patient up for about 84%. Yep. I'm just going to try my third attempt now Go with ahead. the glide scope and we'll see what it gets us. Can you just get ready to provide some uh, backwards, upwards pressure? Yep. All right. Saturated two. All right. And with the glide scope, pretty limited view still. I really just seen the. Okay. If you can't get a view, then come out and we're going to bag the patient, okay? Okay. Coming back out. Let's do a two person ventilation technique here. It's been hard to ventilate from the outset. Okay. Still not ventilating very well. I agree, minimal chest rise. Saturation is now 74%. There's no chest rise. Okay, this is a can't intubate, uh, can't oxygenate situation. Let's move to Craig. Uh, okay. Chris, can you put in a uh, LMA? Sure. Okay. Position standard. Got a landmark. LMA is in position. Cut this up. That's going to be. I can feel the rings. You can cut the uh, tube. Still no chest rise with the LMA. And cuff up, please. Cuff up. And, on. and let's try and bag. Just rise it better. Good. Color metric sat is improving as is uh, sorry, entitled and sat is improving as well. Uh, we'll speak with Gen Surgeon. We're gonna move this patient to the OR for a definitive airway. Okay, so now we're gonna walk uh, step by step. Uh, through the open bougie crank technique using a pig trachea model. So uh, as a right-handed operator, I'll be standing to the patient's right and using my non-dominant or left hand, taking a few different steps um, to identify the midline structures. So feeling the thyroid cartilage, possibly doing a full laryngeal handshake, as level 10 would suggest to get a good sense of where midline is, that kind of being the key in this procedure. Having identified midline then, I'm gonna stabilize the trachea, or sorry, the larynx with my first and third fingers on my left hand. And I'm gonna feel and landmark with the second finger on my non-dominant hand. I'm gonna take my number 11 scalpel. I'm gonna make a generous line incision. And again, this really should just traverse where you think the approximate location of the membrane is. This is meant to be sort of a blunt process uh, just to get your landmarks a bit more oriented. If you could then identify the membrane by palpation, uh, do so. Your second incision is going to be horizontal and it's going to go through the cricothyroid membrane. It's kind of a stab incision. You can feel good hold up when you encounter the posterior cricoid rings. And then you're going to cut both left, me, right, and then left. And you're going to feel hold up on either end by cartilaginous structures as well. The key then is to verify with your finger that you're actually in the right position. I'm just going to expand it a little bit more. A lot of tissue here in Mr. Pig. Okay. So verify with your finger. That's kind of the key confirmatory step. Then you're going to take your, your bougie, in this case a pocket bougie, with a clear day tip facing up. And you're going to start to insert it over your open landmark, down towards the feet. Feel for tracheal rings as you go. You can also feel hold up. Uh, at a certain point, and the bougie should just stop at a certain position, you won't be able to advance any further. At this point, you can let go. The bougie will just stay. Your landmark in your airway is, so to speak, uh, secure. And you can take both hands off. Take your number six endotracheal tube, off with a little lubricant to assist. And feed it gently over the bougie. Bring the bougie back a little bit as necessary so you can grab it at the other end. Once you're able to advance the balloon just past um, the skin, and the tube is in far enough, come up with the bougie, bring up the cuff, and at this stage, you're just at your point of confirming in the tracheal tube position by a normal mechanism of CO2, air entry, so on, and then the final step, 
Having done that is to secure the tubing position and come up with a final airway plan. And that's it.